Jumping right past the intro because Nikon came out with something tonight and it is actually something pretty evolutionary. And why do I say that? It's something that they didn't really have in their line before. Well, they've had, you know, bits and pieces, but it was never in one body. And I just made it a, a video where I'm like, you know, is, is the camera technology, is it plateauing? Is it really even doing anything? Um, and I said, no, it's not blowing me away. But Nikon finally stepped up their camera game. And I'm not just saying that because I use Nikon. I use Canon as well. But Canon has had a huge improvement in the video world. And Nikon finally did it with announcing their D810. So this is June 26, 2014. And a 1201 Nikon made their announcement for their Nikon D810. So here's the quick preview. I'm going to obviously give you the specs because this is very, very new. Some of you might not uh, heard of them. As I said, this was literally released about 20 minutes after it came out. This is when I make this video. So what is it replacing? It's replacing the D800 and the D800E. And basically this is combining the two and giving it a little better ISO. But I'll touch all about that. So really what's it replacing? So the D800, it's replacing four frames per second. Uh, it has the same megapixels at 36.3 megapixels. It's got a lower ISO. Video that does 1080p at 30 and 24 frames per second. So that's pretty standard. But Canon's been in the 60 frames per second. So you kind of see where this is going. And in the uh, E version, they have the the low pass filter taken out the anti-alias uh, um, taken out as well so what is the d810 as i said it's a combo of both with a little more and as a video guy this really really excites me so this is also a 36.3 megapixel camera just like it's d800 d800a and it also has the no optical low pass filter which is great as i said that's why it's combining the 800 and the 800a and there's something better so that way if you're just getting into this and i think this is kind of a better overall camera to get if you're looking to get this in this range with this megapixels and for video i'll cover that in a second uh, and it, it, had, it gives a new ISO option. So it's stepping up probably another step or two from the D800 to D800E, and you can get uh, 64 as your low ISO and 12,800 up to your highest. So it's a pretty good range. As I said, you can really shoot anything now basically and um, uh, without a ton of light. But the cool thing is they added another low two, low one, and a high one, high two. So now they can go down to 32 ISO 32, yes, and it can go up to 51,200, but obviously that's going to look like mush, crushed colors and everything like that. But um, it's just something cool, it's something innovative and something that you're seeing. So it also has an export X Speed 4 processor. Canon's had the game on this one, but it's actually helping the, D800, uh, the D810, it's hard to say, out a little bit. As I said, it's raising its frames per second from 4 from the 800 and 800E to 5 now. Not a big deal. You're not going to shoot sports with this camera, but it's great because you have the, uh, the crop capability to do so, even though people say don't crop. Well, sometimes it's needed and 36 megapixels helps you out. And it does 7 frames per second in DX mode. So it has the same autofocusing uh, mechanisms and everything as the D4S, just like the 800 did as the D4. And one cool thing, Canon's had this for a while as well. Um, a lot of people, not me, because I don't understand it. I understand it's for file size. They have the uh, raw small feature in there. So instead of just having the regular raw file, the large, you know, it's large file, you can get a smaller option and scale it down a little bit. Um, it's a popular consumer thing. Once again, this professional body, not sure why it has it. Um, if you're shooting raw, I'd say you fully shoot raw anyway, but it's an option. Canon has it, now they have it as well. Now this is really what kind of blew me away in regards to video. I mean, you can set up your settings to really kind of do it yourself, but it's not always the full thing. You might have to run it through a different uh, uh, editing program to strip all the uh, like colors away. And so you can have full customization if you're shooting video. This has a flat picture control. Basically, you can shoot your camera flat. Once again, Canon's had this a ton uh, for a while now, but you could shoot your picture, your video flat. So that way you can have full editing control. Yes, I said it later on. And also you can uh, change the aperture in live view, which is big. And for video, as I said, you're getting 1080 uh, P at 30 and 24 frames per second. Now, guess what? You're getting it at 60 frames per second. Welcome Nikon, thank you. That's great, awesome. Those are really the key points. That's what Nikon's stressing. And as it says, it is pretty evolutionary, revolutionary in the Nikon line. Um, it is gonna be 3,300 bucks, same as the Nikon D800E. But as I said, you're really combining what you're getting from what the 800, from what the 800E have with the pass filters and the anti-alias and putting them together and you're getting a beast mega camera. Um, still, I, I'd say that 
If you have the D800, if you have the D800E, there's absolutely no reason to get rid of them uh, unless you know it's on his last legs and you're looking for maybe a second camera. But uh, is, is the extra frames per second worth it 100%? You know, if you're full-time shooting video, I would hope that you wouldn't be using uh, a DSLR anyway if you're using it for a job. So. I don't think you would need it in that case. 60 frames a second really is just for slow, mo true slow motion anyway. Um, it looks cool as hell. But um, overall, I think if you have the 800, the 800E, I think you're really, really set. Unless you need a, uh, you know, some super features like the flat, um, the flat picture control or a little bit more ISO. But I don't think you really need it. But if you're just getting into it and you're looking to get 800, the 800E, I think the 810 is a perfect possibility. And it's kind of me, um, you know, if I was doing a lot more video, uh, you know, actually shooting, I do a lot of lighting stuff on the side. Um, the 810 would be pretty tempting to me. 3,300 bucks body only. <sighs> it's a lot of money, but it's not bad. What are your thoughts? Please list them down in the comments below. And across to the guy with the eye, that's the Nikon D810 preview.